of from new baby. Okay, so I was just talking to Chris about this. So <clears throat> when you have a new baby, you gotta feed the you gotta feed the new baby every two and a half or three hours. Correct. Okay, so you're awake every two and a half or three hours. Okay, there we go. Let's Ooh, oh my god. What's up, Twitch? Oh my Welcome god. To it was round it was still Jake and those sleeves. Six, yes. That's it so was. funny. <laughs> Welcome to round number six. My name is Blake. Hey. I'm here with Stefan. How you doing? It's it's been a day, man. It has been. We a see day. some good magic today. Uh, we have a couple of interesting decks in the feature match area for round number six. These players are playing for potential winning it, um, or is this all for breakers? So, like, our, we'll find out. I yeah, guess. we're trying to figure this. The uh, Prison Tron at the top of your screen, piloted by Brian Cusick. This is a deck that I have seen Brian pilot before. Mm -hmm. Jake, at the bottom of your screen, Jake Tenner playing Grixis Bean Killer. Have you yeah. seen this deck? Uh, I imagine it's a deck to beat the Beanstalk. Decks. Yeah, this is the Orcish, Orcish Bowmasters, Bowmasters Narset, yeah. Parter of Veils, Children of the Apocalypse. Grixis Control deck. So. Yeah, a black base supported by blue and red bangers. Um, I don't believe Jake on the Waste Knots or the Burning Inquiries. <laughs> right, we're only playing the good cards. <laughs> That's correct. Looks like Jake's going to get things started off shocking in a watery grave and pass over to Brian. Brian has an Urza's tower, tower and, and a, a Urza's map. You know Dora's or best friend. map, sorry. Uh, the map? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, what would be if, if it, the map here is in play, what would be the boots? Like, is boots or swiper? It's Ragavan. Is that a monkey. swiper? Yeah. Uh, Jake, oh my god. Jake gonna island cycle this Lorien revealed here. And we so Zeator is proving. Is that Zeator or is that th that is uh, Xander's Lounge? Xander's Lounge. So this is the, the final round of Swiss yep. before the top eight. We have a lot of players waiting for the top eight for a while now. <laughs> yes. Uh, a bunch of our players. Well, I mean, we have been we've been watching these people play Magic all year long, and it's yeah. all come down to this moment right here. There's Power Plant. Two of the Tron pieces in play with the map. You know what that means? That means one, one plus two, one plus one, one. One plus one plus one equals seven. Yep. Uh, and these are white bordered. Uh, those Urza are lands. Those are chronicles. Chronicle lands. Chron yeah, you know, Snoop Dogg was right. This is about the Chronicles. Oh my God! Uh, so we're getting the we're Jake getting just gonna I, pay, play an island and pass back over to Brian. Playing the long. Are we on? Hey, what is it? Uh, Archmage Charm. Is he on that? Uh, I am not sure because that would be a rad. Play Does here. have triple blue? Brian's got triple Tron land. Yeah, seven mana. Are we just Karn? Is it just Karn? Um, so this is Karn this is Prison Tron. It's a little oh. bit different than than what you're expecting. Sure. So this is a Stone Brain. Stone here. Brain. Of course, he does have all of the typical Tron things like uh, uh, Karn the Great Creator. Uh -huh. Is this a green base or is it blue? No, it is colorless. It's just full colorless. It is colorless. Interesting. So we're not in any so he's kind of... he's got Ensnaring Bridges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I assume the Trini great... Trinisphere. Yeah. Are these all in the sideboard? Like, do we have a the great, great Creator? He has these cards in the main deck. In the main deck? Yes. So do we have a card in the Great Creator in the deck? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then additional copies of those uh, stacks pieces in the sideboard. Yeah. So, uh, Brian kind of famous for playing this deck in Modern around here. Okay. Uh, we saw him, I think it was uh, two months ago, so this, so this is a September Modern Tournament. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Brian played Prison Tron in there, made top eight. So now, what is the Stone Brain doing here? It's ripping a card out of his hand and then all of those out of the deck. Right, and then he draws a card for each card you took out of their hand. Right. So he's going to get the counter spell and all other counter and spells. And all other counter spells. And then, it's like pre-modern horizons. And then Jake will get to <laughs> And then Jake will get to draw a card because he took one copy out of the hand. This is also the best counter spell art. Um, it's also the best counterspell flavor text. Correct. <laughs> this is Mercadian Masks. If you know me, you know how I feel about Mercadian Masks, which is I am a contrarian at heart. I adore Mercadian Masks. I think the set is an absolute banger. There are some mopey cards in it, sure. But like There's overall, mopey cards in every set. Yeah, exactly. I I think we have to get past that. Look at the You know, look and set it at the waterfront bouncer. Look and set it days. Look and set it gush. Get past it. 
I do love a waterfront bouncer. And some, like, the art direction in that set was gorgeous. So Brian has had a look at Jake's deck. Yeah, you get to see the full thing there. That's really nice. And now he's going to get to shuffle and just draw a card. It's like the world's most brutal Vendillion clique. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Here is an a expedition map from Brian with that floating yeah, mana. Got a shuffle. Just pass back over. To you know, he, here. we don't know if this is resolving. He has to. He has to shuffle and draw first. So we'll see. I don't know what other. Oh, that it resolves. Looked like it was just a land. Yeah. So. And we're just. He casting. is going to cast this flame of Anor at the end of the turn. I imagine that'll draw him a couple of fresh cards. The darkness will not avail you. And the <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself. We will head over to Jake here. He's going to untap and take a draw step. That is brutal, that that stone brain just ripping him apart like that. I wondered if he should have countered that. Yeah, um, so this deck does not cantrip a ton, whereas the regular Tron deck does because you have the bobbles that sure. draw cards. So a lot of these cards in uh, Jake's deck, like the Orcish Bowmasters and the Narset Potter Reveals, don't actually accomplish very much. Mm. Um, yeah, Brian's deck just doesn't draw draw a ton of cards. It, yeah. does, it does some tutoring and stuff like that. But, yeah, Karn being one of those cards uh, that doesn't draw Here is anything, a but... Shieldred the Apocalypse. Hey, uh, that card's pretty good. Brian is definitely going to have to do something about that. But one thing about this Prison Tron deck is it's it has uh, so many different answers. Yeah. Um, I think, sort of needs I it. think, you know, uh, very much filling that control control style of play. Which is funny because they're both control decks. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the, the thing about Shieldred that I like in this matchup is, like you said, we have all of these things that prevent combat. Like, we have good steering bridges. Um, we have the ways to put bodies in play to kind of muck up the board with stuff like Urza's Saga here. And this is one of the... This is one of the Tron decks where you just get to slam in Urza Saga because you're not on any colored mana. Mm. Um, and this doesn't care about a mucked up board. This doesn't care about your ensnaring bridge. No, Shouldered gets to, um, with Vigilance, attack for two every turn. Uh, you gain two life and she cannot be blocked. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. the equivalent of a shock every turn. I mean, it's a four or five with, Here is with like a death spell sight. So, Spell Skite, uh, a card that w used to be a staple. Yeah. Uh, when when the Infect deck or the Birthing Pod oh, deck right. uh, were big decks. You don't see a whole lot of Spell Skites anymore. Mm -hmm. It's really good against um, some of the uh, some of the red decks where you're playing... Uh, like the Burn Spells yeah. and stuff. Sure. Um, Another Stone Brain? Yeah. Stone Brain is going to get played. Good looks like God. Brian is thinking about uh, activating it right away. Looks like he's looking over. Must have wrote down the contents of Jake's hand when he activated it the first time. So we have... So um, you already know that Mind Slaver is one of my favorite magic oh, arts. Oh, yeah. You know what else is another one of my favorite magic arts? Uh, Jester's Cap. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That actually tracks a lot. <laughs> so uh, Stone Brain... Uh, Doing a great Jester's Cap. Basically, well, it's basically a power crept. Yeah. Jester's Cap. Does it to take anything, or is there like a preclusion on mana value here? Uh, no. For... for Stonebrain? Yeah. No, you just sack it oh my and God. name a card. So he's going to take the one ring here. Yeah. Uh, looks like he is going to take the one ring here. Do you name a card before you look at their hand? Yeah. Okay, so he just, he blind named Counterspell. Uh, yes. Holy crap. Yeah, I got him. Skill. <laughs> I mean, I say A lot of the times of... with stuff like that, uh, Kapal Therapy, etc. Yeah. You just name the, like, one of the best cards in the Correct. matchup. yeah. So. Which is like, I... I I say skill is like kind of a joke, but it's true. Like knowing the matchup, knowing the cards that they're on and knowing what's going to be good against you. 100%. Yeah, that's skill. Brian named the correct card the first time, tracked the cards in hand, played it, named the second card. And like, yeah, he's going to get to draw a card, but it doesn't matter. That that right. one ring was going to win the game one, for him. One, one card at a time, we get to take the best cards out of Jake's deck. And, he, and what he's left with is just uh, basically a, a pile of reactive yeah. cards. And Shieldred and the One Ring together are mm. absurd. Like, yeah. that's not an okay very, combo. Very, very hard combo to beat. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he was sort of priced into taking it. Like, he, he couldn't let that stand. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, Jake is still gaining a lot of life Looks here. Looks like Shieldred's Edict is going to take care of a spell spite. Yeah. Sure. 
And here is land number five. Oh, we're just getting in. Going to attack. Brian, down to 14. We still have Lorien Revealed in hand. Uh, I see a Fatal Push, a Lorien Revealed, another copy of Shilger's Edict, another copy of Flame of Anor, and a land. Yeah. So this Shilder's still doing work. Like, this game isn't near over. At this point, we're probably just going to see Pithing. Like, well, not even Pithing. Second copy of Urza Saga. Here is, it looks like, six mana from Brian. Nope. Mm. Gonna have a think. Yeah, he's, he can just float mana, make construct, make construct. Uh, these Urza Sagas are uh, on one and two counters. Hmm. Yeah, so he's only going to be able to make one construct on end step, and then he has to do it. He's going to cast a Ooh. walking ballista. Looks like X eight. equals eight. X is four. X is Sorry. eight mana total. X is uh, three. It looks like. Oh sure. Yeah. He untapped the mine afterwards. Fatal push and just push take it. care of that. Is he just going to six three is a bonus? Yeah, I mean that's the correct play here. <laughs> Misty Rainforest is going to get cracked. While we take care of that, please give us a follow. Oh, yeah. we got plenty more content coming in 2024. Follow us here on Twitch. You can head over to YouTube, or if you're watching us on YouTube on a VOD later on, please subscribe to the channel. It's old Cranky Man Collectibles at YouTube. We've got a, a serious backlog of content, all from the last year. Oh my all God, of it yeah. building to this tournament right here, the Old Cranky Man Championship. Yeah, this weekend entirely. This weekend, yeah. Today, uh, we've got the championship finals. So this is the last round of Swiss. These players playing for the championship belt and their share of $3,000. Tomorrow, <sighs> starting at 1 p.m., is the Lawnlander Championship. Ugh. That's our Canadian Highlander Championship Series. So, top eight. Uh, the top eight will battle it out tomorrow for the Lawnlander Sword. Oh. It, there's an actual sword. Oh, yeah. First place gets a sword and their share of $1,200. Yeah. That'll start at 1. We're hosting with coverage that day. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, three three rounds, best of five. Yes. It's, so quarterfinals, yeah. semifinals, and finals, all best of five. Again, that's 1 p.m. Central tomorrow. Uh, Brian just checking the graveyard there. Yeah, the Bowmaster came down and uh, took care of the Construct token. Is this Shoulders going to go the distance? Ticking up here. Uh, like I said before, R Brian does not have a ton of waves to kill the Shoulders. <sighs> Uh, if he draws one of his um, Oblivion Stones. Oh, sure. Yeah, that would be And I think maybe he has one copy of Ugin Ineffable. Okay. Can't have with him. So another Construct <laughs> token going to get created here as this Chapter 3. This is one of the reasons on the why... Stack. Brian's going to search. Oh, yeah. Shieldred's Edict against to decks where they're making token creatures. You get to yeah. deal... Like, you get to choose whether or not Right. Yeah. You, it's a, it's an edict, but uh, g the go wide strategy is not nearly as good as yep. against it as it used to be. Yeah. Ooh, basilisk collar. Oh, that's super fun. That's interesting. That's great with walking ballista. Uh, yes, it is. You think he's got another one in hand? Um, here's a third copy of Versus Saga. You know, Ryan. based. I don't know what's the what's it to equip three? Is it three or two to? Equip? Uh, basilisk collar is two to equip. Two to equip. Okay. So he could play it for four. The 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 ballista for X equals four. Yeah, and then equip the basilisk collar. Basilisk collar to it's it. Three mana. <coughs> yep. So here it is. This is basilisk collar for four. So it's going to come in with two plus one plus one counters, and then he'll have the mana to equip it right away. Yep. And he's going to be able to deal with Shieldred and the. Looks like Shieldred's edict is going to get cast in response here. So. Uh, Brian will point that one damage at the, the see he got to masters. He got to name the non token, mm -hmm. and that's so critical. Yeah, yeah, very very good against the deck like Tron. Because he has to deal with the Shieldred. It's like it's just going to end the game. Mm. Jake just has to stick it and save it, and that is it. Yeah, and with only one card left in hand, you got to think: was that his only way that he had to kill that Shieldred? I don't know, man. If it was, if it was he's in a tough spot he needs that top of the deck to really do something great for him 100 percent. like either a car in the great creator to get something out of his uh to get something out of the uh the sideboard to deal with it directly like you said the o stone yep, the o stone um or like genuinely 
if he can just rip something. Like, he's not a dismember, is he? Um, I believe Brian does play dismember. Ooh, okay, uh, that is the I'm hit. I'm not sure how many of them are, but I, I believe he only probably has probably six, maybe seven ways to kill the shield or his entire yeah. deck. And his deck does not draw a ton of cards. To be clear, that is also a brutal play to have to for yourself with a dismember. Yeah, after, he's already after, the, after the shield yeah. has already dealt you with six damage, eight yeah. damage. Yeah. He's at six. Yeah, the dismember wouldn't do it because he's at six now. It would two off the shieldred, four off the dismember. Yeah. You're dead. I think. I think it has to be um, an Oblivion Stone, an Ugin the Ineffable, or an Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I think those yeah. are his only outs. Oh, um, perhaps he also has a, a Cityscape Leveler. That's that would, also yeah. That would do it as well. That'd be fantastic. He's he's not out, but he definitely needs a good top yeah, deck. He's got it. He's got to be able to kill the shieldred. Uh, this construct token is just a two-two. I believe Brian mm -hmm. has the ability to make another construct token with that second copy of Versus Saga. It's got two chapter counters on it. I don't know how much it's going to matter, though. Um, preventing the Shieldred from being able to attack him is pretty important right now. Fair. I, I, get, I, get, I suppose just chumping. He's already got one. Yeah, he's just like going to get in. Both creatures are going to get in the red zone. Jake is at 27. He's at 27 life. <laughs> I... Are we? Oh, we're double blocking. Yeah, they're two yeah, three Oh threes. my god. Um, Jake was signaling a removal spell pretty heavily. Oh, okay, there. sure. Yeah, um, I was half expecting it to be a second copy of Orcish Bowmasters, but Lightning Bolt accomplishes the same thing. Yeah, sure does. It, interestingly, he could have just waited, bolted his opponent. Uh, but Jake, I think Jake made the right call there. Use the you, of, yeah. you mean use the bolt to finish the game? Yeah. Um, so he is he is playing a control deck like an aggro deck right now. Yeah, um, he, yeah. We he, just is, he is attacking and forcing the issue with these tokens, double blocking Absolutely. in order to trade for it, and then he can just use his removal. All he was already going to use it anyway. Mm -hmm. He could just use it to further decimate his opponent's um, position. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the critically, it's the the reason that Lightning Bolt is so good is that you can use it wherever, whenever you need it. Like you're going to be able to point it to creature when you need to eliminate it. Sure. Like obviously, he got to he got to eat one of the tokens by removing the other. You can finish the game with it. And Can't quite tell what he's got in hand. I think it's <sighs> Land Lorien revealed, and I'm not sure what that third card is. Interestingly, I think this is the only red card I've seen in the deck so far, is the Lightning Bolt. Uh, he has Flame of Anor also. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Flame of Anor yeah. is And I believe he got Fury, Fury in the sideboard, I think. Okay, that's a great card to have anyway. Yeah. For now, we'll see. Hey guys, <laughs> check back on <in> Monday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, if you follow me on Twitter, it is at R-U-G underscore L-Y. That's at Rugly. I tweeted the other day that all of the local players that are qualified for this, for this event were uh, collectively... Uh, screaming or breathing a sigh of relief about the timing of Monday's ban announcement. Uh, <laughs> I think it's perfect. I'm going to. I'm going to say. I think that that is perfect for how we do, how we're doing it right now. It, it would be such a different, yeah. play, like a, a completely different landscape if if the tournament was after today. Yeah. Which is wild to me. Like this is such a great snapshot yeah, definitely, of the year. Yeah, def it, it is an excellent snapshot of the year. That's yeah. a very this is this is basically the last weekend that you're going to be able to you know play decks like Scam oh. and 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 you know see what happens. But maybe even the five color beans deck is going to get hit. We're going to be able to deal uh, with here's the second copy of Walking Ballista. That's going to immediately pick up this Basilisk Collar, which means that that uh, that Walking Ballista has Death Touch now. Yes, it can ping children and kill it. I mean, obviously, any kind of lightning bolt off of off of Jake. Are we just, yeah. yeah Shieldred oh. is gone, so uh, excellent. You love to see it. And as lifelink. Is this the point where Brian is going to be able to turn the corner against this Grixis <sighs> grindy deck? Hard to say. You know, Shieldred... Jake, Jake does still have, I think, four cards in hand after yeah. his draw step there. So he's got quite a bit to work with still. I know he's got um, a copy of Lorien Revealed in hand. Plenty mm. of lands in play. You could definitely start, you know, using that as an Ancestral Recall. Does Flame of the Nord deal... Five to any target or just creature? Creature. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so at this point, Jake re really needs something to close this gap. Like, he could draw a second Shieldred. That would be fantastic. Uh, well, um, yeah. There, it, Brian is still in a really rough spot. Mm -hmm. um, if he gets to untap uh, and maybe use that mana a little bit more... He, he might be in an okay position. This um, this Urza Saga is going to go up to Chapter 3, so he'll be able to potentially yeah. make a Construct token, plus go pick something else up. Um, he could be turning the color. Oh, he's forcing the issue. 
He's attacking with the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, um, so uh, we can uh, potentially use this welding jar to... Um, We're making it bigger. Oh, wow. So gonna, oh, Brian, Brian must have said no blocks. Here's an Orcish Bowmaster on the stack. It looks like the trigger is going to target the Walking Ballista. So the Welding Jar is now going to regenerate the Walking Ballista. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get that thing's going to get bigger. The army's going to get bigger. It's going to be a 2-2. Two -two. Yep. And what is that? <laughs> What is this card? Oh, it's a Tishana's Tidebinder. Oh, it's a new one! Holy cow, he just Tishana's Tidebindered it. What? Oh, sweet. This is the first time that we've seen this card this is a uh, new one. on this stream. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. So Tishana's Tidebinder is a 3-3 three, three with flash for uh, two, one, uh, sorry, two and a blue. Yep. And it says, uh, uh, with when Tishana's Tidebinder enters the battlefield, you may counter target activated or triggered ability from an artifact or creature. If an ability is countered this way, that artifact or creature loses all abilities. Yep. So we're, we're that is so cool. So that we're we're countering the regenerate from the. Uh, I'm not sure which ability which ability uh, he countered. I would imagine he countered the uh, regenerate from, from the. the from the welding jar. jar. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. The, so and then I think the um, the walking ballista got uh, maybe where did he point the walking ballista? He surely took the counter off of it and uh, yeah. aimed a damage somewhere. Uh, I think he aimed it at the uh, that that creature should be a two two. Oh, he killed the. He killed uh, yeah, that's the, what I was thinking. Is he killed the he killed the one one? But the he killed the bowmasters. But the token should be two two now. Ah uh, yes, because it was a. Yeah, it was already in play. Yeah, that should, should be a should amass. That's fine. We're, One more. We're an REL. Comp, we're comp REL here. It's up to the players to manage that. Um, if we missed a trigger, that's yep. up to that. But that is the players. Yeah, if they um, <clears throat> if they choose to, uh, you know. Yeah, if, if somebody calls a judge or if we we go back and we missed it, right. that's We're, totally fine. There it is. Here okay. Is, here is a Karn the Great Creator from Brian. This is a great play. Like, so, this is a great top yeah, deck. Yeah, this... The, the, Brian Brian really had his back against the wall a couple mm -hmm. of turns ago with that shield drain, but he had a string of really, really excellent draws, and this Karn the Great Creator might be the thing that's able to put him back in the driver's Ugh. seat of this game. So, interestingly, he has only drawn one of each copy of the Tron lands and every other land has been an Urza Saga. Uh, 10 out of 10. Yeah, this is... <laughs> he is firing on all cylinders and still holding on by the knuckles. Like, scraping it out here. So now he's going to be able to check that sideboard, go for an option that's going to... that, I mean, whatever he needs at this moment. Yeah, um, Brian's deck, again, is Prison Tron, a little bit different than the other Tron decks. Yep. Um, he has... He has a lot of like, uh, like it's staring bridge and Trinisphere and stuff like this that uh, that really aim to slow the game down to a halt, mm -hmm. and then um, uses walking ballista. There's another one as walking ballista as his win con. Oh, so he pulled that out of the graveyard. Oh, uh, with the card. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's fantastic. Yeah, you don't see that a lot, but it's totally reasonable. He already has the the basilisk caller in play. Why not? Yeah. C -c 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 combo. Yeah, I mean, at this point, we have a Tashana's Tidebinder. If we have, like, it, if he tries to remove the Walking Ballista, he gets to kill the Tidebinder with the Walking Ballista, and then he's only getting in for one. At this point, Jake's best draw is probably Bolt Bolt. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, Lightning Bolt, versatile, great game ender. Okay, so we are just slamming in. I think we're, are we going in at Brian or are we going at Karn? Oh, we're going. Oh, one, I think, I think we need to go at Brian here. Um, <coughs> looks like, one one, looks like one at Karn and then yeah. three from the Tidebinder at Brian. So, uh, Brian is going to block. And now he either gets to, he, he can either choose to lose the Ballista or trade straight up. Like he can, he can trade straight up with it or he can, yeah, yeah, there was, how did he kill both? Uh, Tishana's Tidebinder is a 3-1. Oh, it's a 3-1? Isn't it a 3-1? I, I mean, you can check. I, I was thinking it was a 3-1. Oh, maybe it is a 3-3. Three, three. Um, actually, the, the army token is back in play now. So Okay, sure. Yeah, he because he would have had to either take a counter off 
to kill it and then lose it. Oh, and here's a there. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. He just has another copy of Shieldred. Yep. <clears throat> And he lost the walking ballista, the ballista plus a basilisk. Well, Brian has this active Karn in play now. Yeah. Um, I, I gotta think maybe uh, the Shieldred is not long for this world. He better not be, otherwise he's dead. <laughs> yeah, so Tishana's Tidebinder is a 3-2. Looks like we drew another, uh, another power plant off of there. Oh man, this is tense. Which, I mean, with his active Karn in here, that's probably what Brian wants to see is a little bit more mana. Yeah, not wrong. Because, all right, so he's sacrificing it now. He's going to get back the walking ballista. So he exiled the walking ballista with his own rel his own relic of progenitus to get it out of exile mm. with Karn so that he could replay it, equip yes. this, equip this the... Is, I, I heard somebody clutch. talking about this. Clutch. About this play pattern uh, with this Prison Tron deck. Is, uh, this is something that it can just keep doing over and over and that over again. That is amazing. Using that to just... So now we have the... And he was able to use all that mana yep. as well. So now we have this uh, Lifelink Death Touch Ballista. Oh, man. Uh, that still ha gets to keep two counters on it. Yeah, I mean... You don't want to waste that counter on the... On the and it what looks is like Brian is going to pull the trigger on this Relic of Progenitus. Oh. So all the graveyards are going to get exiled. Holy cow. I mean, this is still rough from the perspective of, like, Jake still has so many outs... But Brian may have clawed his way back into this game totally. Jake is just drawing lands. Yeah, so the One Rings were actually um, exiled to the Stone Brain. Yep, as were the, the counterspells. On the third turn of the game. Or the fourth turn of the game. Fourth turn. The, yeah, the third turn he Stone Brained uh, and named Counterspell. Blind named it. And then, yeah, and took a card out of Jake's hand. And then on turn th uh, four, he Stone Brained the One Rings. So the only win conditions that are left in Jake's deck are Orcish Bowmasters and Shield or the Apocalypse. Yeah, this is honestly... The fact that Brian has kept his cool, has known what he's doing, gone for outs, known exactly what he was digging for every time. Yeah, really really played very well. Yeah. Oh, is that a... Um, and from behind as well. Is that a forge? That is a Mystic Forge. Oh, yes. baby. So, again, when you're talking about being a colorless deck... Yeah, Mystic Forge is something that, that the Prison Tron deck gets to play yeah. that the other Tron decks really don't. Unless you just eat through your deck. And, like, if nothing um, else... I used to... I played uh, Mono Green Tron, uh, Mono Blue Tron sometimes. Uh, I've played... And the game what? is over. It looks like Brian is going to take this one down. So these players are going to get sideboarded. Uh, what I was going to say was, I used to have a Mystic Forge in my sideboard, but now I just get to play the One Ring. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be right back with game number two. Hey everybody! Oh, uh, what's up, Twitch? Are you ready for game number two? These players are. They're showing oh my up. God. Stefan, tell me what Jake did in sideboarding. Okay, so uh, Jake's sideboard's choices actually make a lot of sense if you think about what he's playing against. So a lot of stuff that he's taking out is one for one or like commensurate removal. So we're taking out the full playset of Orcish Bowmasters. Obviously, not a lot of card drawn Brian's side. So we're not really punishing anything there. Uh, kind of, it kind of became awkward, like we saw in that last game. And of course, fatal, fatal push doesn't do anything. Um, cards just come out. That's eight cards out. Um, I saw Jake sort of looking for cards to bring in to the place. <laughs> it's so funny because like those eight cards basically don't do anything. Um, the cards he brought in are two engineer explosives, so E to deal with basically anything. Sure. Two copies of Alpine Moon, which is hateful as all shit. Uh, Sorry, that course. was swears. Um, Force of Negation, <laughs> a Void Mirror, which I think is really cool tech in this. A Void Mirror? Yeah, if you don't spend colored mana, it gets so countered. So it just all of the... Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, so this is an unfortunate side effect of, of Evoke Elementals being everywhere. Yep. Uh, yeah. Brian just gets to pay the iron price. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and then another copy of Shieldred and another copy of Cursed Totem. Okay. All right. Yeah. What, what did uh, what did Brian do here? Uh, that was a, a pretty heavy sideboarding. Uh, Brian <coughs> did pretty light sideboarding. Uh, just brought in uh, Crucible of the Worlds. 
Okay. Phyrexian Metamorph and a Cityscape Leveler. Nice. Took out one copy of Pithy Needle and two Ensnaring Bridges. So what is this card he played uh, here? The, that is an inscribed tablet. Oh, okay. So it's one to play, one to activate. You look at the top five cards, and then you can put a, um, I think, I'm uh, not sure if it's colorless card or land card specifically. It's um, sort of like the colorless it, version yeah, of it's, a... Yeah, it's like a, a, a Ancient Stirrings. Yeah, exactly. That costs an extra mana. Uh, here's a Walking Ballista on two. So, uh, yeah, uh, Brian, or sorry, Jake, not a whole lot of activated abilities in deck, so Pithing Needle not doing a ton, and then uh, Jake also not doing a ton of attacking. So, Ensnaring Bridge, not at its okay. finest. It's a land, so it's just a land. It's just a land. Okay, yeah. you, okay, perfect. So We're not on turn three Tron here, but that... Urza Saga is uh, very good. Yeah, and also, th this isn't a matchup where you need to have Tron on turn three. Uh, the, the opponent is giving him a little bit of time to kind of work his stuff out. Yeah. So here's another activation from Inscribed Two, Tablet three, after the Shieldry, four. the Apocalypse Resolve. So no Tron in the in those tops. He is just going to take this Power yeah. Plant. Or Yeah, and Power Plant, still a land, right? In a deck that doesn't produce colored mana, right. it's, you're still it's, hitting your land drops. Land drop. Yeah, yeah. And when you do finally have the Tron, oh, rest <clears> in peace. He did just draw another Urza's Power Plant off the top of the library there so <laughs> really stock, God. really stocked up on power plants yeah um, would love to see a tower urza saga gonna get another yeah. lore counter he's got two power plants and a mine a, a, a mine, mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, brian will just pass back to jake and jake already has having the children in play off to a much better start than getting stone brains twice in a row yeah, yeah, that, that, was, was, that was pretty brutal. Just took his his two best cards. Oh yeah, like counterspell was going to do some terrible work for him. Yeah, I mean it would it would have given Jake um, a lot more to say about the things. That is the only counterspell in the deck, right? Um, like I don't think he's running force, he, is he? He has force of negation. I believe. sure okay. So there's force of negation and and, and, counterspell. and counterspell, and I, that is all. I think that's it. That's. Shieldred gonna get in the red zone. Or what are we? Are we making tokens? Uh, yeah, Brian is making a construct here. So it's a pretty construct. Untap and draw. Saga gonna go up to three. Brian's gonna take a second to figure out what he's gonna do with it. Oh my god, he's already at twelve. That Shieldred, just like the 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 ability to not do anything and win the game. Control decks famously like to do nothing and then win. <laughs> We do all kinds of things. What do you mean? Yeah. We, I mean, <clears throat> sure. We take care of your things. Uh, looks like he is going to make a construct token with a uh, chapter three on the stack. Yeah. Really hoping to get that. I wonder, is he just going to get a map off of this? Yeah. yeah. So he can go find his other Tron piece. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I love how I love how the Saga deck, or the Urza Saga is played so well with the the Tron lands, yep. and you, you go find that map so that you can find your last Tron piece. You definitely... Good stuff. You lose a bit not having green or blue, like not being able to Ancient Stirrings or have any kind of, like, a preordain, like, in the blue Yeah, version. well, I mean, even the even the green and the blue Tron decks are playing a few copies of Versus Saga. Yeah, you don't get to go all in. You don't get to play all, all four of them, though. This one does. And, like, with Gusto. And, and once you get, like, a Crucible of Worlds in play... Oh, boy. We yeah. can just have lots of fun. Yeah, you're, you're, you're off to the races. I'll play a Saga every other turn. Why? Every other turn? Get three going. <laughs> play one every turn, baby. Here's an Alpine Moon. You gotta, you gotta think that's gonna name... Let's tower. see. Um, well, he doesn't Wait. have a tower in play, yeah. so... He just named Power Plant. He can name, you know, Power Plant or Mine. Yeah. A Mine. I name Mine. Yours. Um, one unfortunate thing about this Prison Tron deck that that I that I really don't love is uh, the lack of Beseju. That is a real problem. So Beseju from the Green Tron deck is a really really good reason to play. Beseju is oh we got a Tish Tasha's type to shot on his tide tide binder. Uh, did it, it counter the, the expedition yep. map? <coughs> it also gets this deck gets brutalized by Beseju. If they besage you, you, you get nothing. Yeah. That's uh, He has like, one basic island in his oh, deck. Oh, does he? Yeah, oh, that's Brian so Brian has one island in his deck. Uh, what do you third, have to pick a basic? Pick third a copy of Power Plant here. I think this game is just about over. Let's see what Brian's got. So uh, We said that before. does have five mana now. I mean, you could Karn? 
It is welding looks like jar. a welding jar. Okay, sure. So the construct of going block. There it is. Here is a Karn, <clears throat> the great creator. So Karn is going to be able to get something relevant, hopefully. Um, notably, he only has one mana up right now. So this is going to go to hand, and then he has to be something he can cast and have an or, immediate Or impact, he'll have to wait until next turn. Which it, he cannot. <laughs> he has one creature in play, and Jake has removal spells. This just feels... You know what? I've said this before. Like, in the last game, I was so confident that it was over. Brian didn't have a leg to stand on. Came from <laughs> nowhere. Oh, it's a Tormod script. Okay. Tormod, famous for his crypt. And nothing else. And nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> Made a brief appearance in the commander set. We are going to head back to Jake. Oh, yeah. Gaining two Looks life. Looks like it's going to be an engineered explosives. explosives. Great card. For explosives zero. for zero, and then he will immediately yep, that's it. sack it, and Brian is going to pack him up. <coughs> it's time for the players to get ready for game number three. Yep. Oh, he can't. He can't crack it. He has a Karn. Perfect. You'll love to see it. Oh, yeah. He, he had the five to deal. Okay. Excellent. It's fine. It's All right. fine. Game number three. We'll be Nobody right back. freak out. <laughs> And we're back. All right. Are you ready for game number three? Micro breaks happening right now. We're at round six. Yeah. This is brutal. Looks like Brian's going to go ahead and take a mulligan here. I don't think either player changed anything. So No. Same deck's going to run him back for game number three. Uh, what does Jake have in the hand? So I see a Xander's Lounge. We look. Uh, we see perfect mana. So that's good. We love that. You know what really hurt for Brian the last game was just the that counter of that map. That map was going no, the to... No, the Alpine Moon already had him off Tron. Oh, that's right, it did. Ugh. Still, it could have gotten into Urza Saga. Like, that would have been an out sure. to at least, like, muck up the ground. All right, looks like Brian is going to keep the six... Excuse me, six-card hand. We're going to put one to the bottom, and we will get started. So Tron able to mulligan well. So. If you're hanging out, thanks. I'm glad that you're here. Please follow us here on Twitch. Yes, please. And head over to the YouTube channel. Also it's that. YouTube.com slash Old Cranky Man Collectibles. All of our oh. backlog is over there. These videos will be up there eh, probably by the end of the yeah. month. In addition to... All of the Longlander videos yep. for tomorrow. Tune in here live on Twitch at 1 p.m. to watch the Longlander Championship. That is our Canadian Highlander League. we got the top eight tomorrow starting at 1 p.m. Central time. Central time. We have a lot of viewers. Looks so, like a cursed totem and an inscribed tablet from these players here. Or is a saga going to go to Brian's hand? This was a mulligan to five for Brian. Uh, was it? I thought yeah. it was only six. Nope. He had to put two cards under. And well, there's another Urza Saga. Things seem to be going there. okay. Urza Saga. Yeah, not the now. worst. Right? Like, would have been, would have been great if he had been able to land, like, the, the Crucible there. Like look, at, look at Brian doing a little <laughs> dance. <laughs> oh, no! The Void Mirror. You know, I heard when you stare into oh, it, Oh, I thought it was back. a cursed totem. No, that is a Void Mirror. That card is incredibly brutal. Well, at least he has this and He has this binder. Urza Saga, but it, it looks like this Shoshana's Tidebinder is going to take care of that. Ugh. So Void Mirror says that whenever you're, whenever a player casts a spell, if, color, if no colored mana was spent to cast it, counter that counter. spell. Yeah, but... We got the Zerza Saga. Zerza Saga can make tokens. Then we can go get a one drop, which is not casting it. There's another backup copy of Urza Saga. You are the eternal optimist here. The, the Void Mirror, uh, not the end of the world here. No. It, you know, it is like the map to the end of the world. It's like a guy pointing the way. <laughs> and Tidebinder here, actually a good body. 
Like, just the ability to slam in every turn with a, th- what is it, 3-1, three, 3-2? Three, three it's power. 3-2. Three, three, uh, Lorien revealed going to get cycled. A basic island go into hand. I don't believe it removes the... So there's a counter, uh, comment saying that it would the, the saga would be dead and no longer has chapters. It still has chapters. It's just countering the ability from that chapter. Uh, so it no Tish, longer has... The, I thought Tishana's Tidebinder could only target an artifact or creature. Um... Uh, we have a judge call at the table right now. Uh, I got to imagine that that's what this is about. Tishana's yeah. Tidebiter can only target artifacts and creatures. Yeah. Let me get uh, clarification. From yeah. <clears throat> so the the triggered ability of being able to put a counter on it doesn't like of, of being countered by putting the, or the ability of getting the ability when the second counter goes onto it, countering that with Tishana's Tidebinder wouldn't remove the chapter ability, like wouldn't remove chapters, it wouldn't be destroyed uh, for state-based actions, but I don't believe we can target it. Um, Let's see. No, no, no. So only if it's an artifact creature or planeswalker countered does it lose all abilities. So it is not an artifact creature or planeswalker. You can still counter it, but it's not going to lose all abilities. So it's still going to remain because it's not an artifact creature or planeswalker. So we can counter it, but it doesn't lose it. It doesn't lose all abilities. Correct. Yeah. So it stays in play. That's an excellent call, though. Like if it had been an artifact creature or planeswalker, it would have lost all abilities and died yes. because it would still been a saga. Yes. Yeah. It's it's what Ursa Saga continues to be an absolute nightmare of a rules card. Uh. Yeah. It, it, it's real weird. Yeah. So it looks like Brian is going to float a mana and this third chapter is going to go on the stack. I appreciate the call out though. Like it's something that does need to be seen and to shot this Tidebinder brand new card already making impacts in a lot of formats. Uh, it is a pretty sick stifle and you see here is a second copy of Tishana's Tidebinder is going to take yeah. care of that Urza Saga once again. So, yeah, it's just uh, not getting the These are coming in anything. clutch here and now they're going to attack for 6, Brian, down to 11. Yeah, no he that mulligan, I think, really was brutal for him. Like, not... He was really hoping that Inscribed Tablet was going to hit the third Tron land for him and he'd kind of be off to the races. Here is a lightning bolt, so that is going to knock him down. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he is just down to 11 now, yeah. so... Uh, but Jake has more mana than... He's got a, a one ring in hand. He's got a flame, flame of the Nor, the one ring, and... What is that third card? Uh, I don't know. It looks like Oops All Bangers to me. <laughs> Somewhere Captain Crunch is like, ooh, I should get third into magic. Third chapter of the second Urza Saga. It looks like that one's going to get a resolve. So Brian says, finally, I get to do my thing. Yeah, you get to tutor. Looks and like it's map. It's going to be an expedition map. Yep. Now we get to get a tower, finally. So he's going to use the floating mana from the Urza Saga Smart. and tap the power plant to activate the map. So we'll go searching again. I got to imagine this is going to be an Urza's Tower to complete the Tron and give Brian five mana for this. Yeah, game. nice. Not notice this. Notice me, Senpai. Brian. So he just went and got a swap? No. Is it a... S- it's a swap. Why did he get a swap that says notice me, Senpai? I don't know, but uh, I'm here for it. Let's go, Brian. Let's go, Brian. I am, <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> He'll just pass back over to Jake. Jake's gonna take a draw step to show oh, his tide binder. Because he has the he has the void mirror. He needs the black. Oh, so he can gotcha. Yeah, he's gonna be able to really gonna, hurt himself badly. He's gonna pay two life for a dismember here. So yeah. it's gonna take care of one copy of Tishana's Tidebinder and then the second one will connect. So Brian will oh, be down to six here. That's rough. Do, uh, oh my god. And here's the cursed totem. So uh, the double whammy uh, <coughs> uh, of play prison effects against yeah. the prison deck. <laughs> yeah, the old one-two punch. <laughs> Brian looking at himself in the mirror right now wondering, is this what I do to people? <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> And here's oh natural tower Here okay is the Urza's tower yeah uh, interesting that he had to go get the swamp so that he could actually play spells that's fun so you did mention he has a basic it's not an island it is a swamp oh I saw the island he does also have an island oh okay deck. sure yeah <laughs> why not why Porque no los dos uh, here is a that's walking a ballista four, four. for 
X equals four, so yeah. it'll come in with four counters on it after he pays eight mana. I'm not going to count him out. A Flame, Flame of Anor are going to get pointed at the Ballista. Oh, Tishon Sidebinder's a wizard. Oh, that's fun. He got to draw two cards off of that. That's gross. It couldn't activate the abilities either. Because he has the Curse Totem. Because he has the Curse Totem. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's so brutal. Like I said... <laughs> The, the classic play prison effects against the prison deck. You can hear me actively pogging. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, a second pog has hit the, <laughs> has hit the booth. <laughs> oh, no. All right. We, we've got an Akum... Is that an Akum Refuge? No, that's a uh, Buried Ruin. Buried Ruin, yeah. Still, Brian, only able to really cast one spell a turn since he has... Gonna it, activate the Burry yeah. Ruin right away. That's gonna get, get the back ballista. the Walking Ballista. And then. Flame uh, of an Ore. Cast the Walking Ballista. Shows him a Flame of an Ore, and that's it. He's dead to the Tishana's Tide Tidebinder next turn. So, wow. Jacob Tinner gonna take this one down over Brian Cusick. Wow. And that's it for the Swiss. So, all, Six of, rounds. all of 2023 has been building to this. It's time for the top eight. Absolutely. We'll be right back. We'll be back with our top eight. In just a little bit. Love you. Bye.